Hello everyone, welcome to English Literature with Sumi. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the change of meaning, which is one of the most important topics in the development of English language. In this video, I am going to discuss 10 different processes or methods through which words changes their meaning in different circumstances. So let's get started. So before moving on to the process or methods of what, how words changes their meanings, let me give you a brief introduction of what is meant by change of meaning. So change of meaning is one of the most important concepts or topics in the development of English language. There are many words in English language which have changed or modified their meaning in due course of time and we sometimes feel uh, tensed or we often want, we often want to know why certain words mean different in different circumstances. In reality, words have no independent meaning and their meaning actually depends upon our human mind and also to the context in which we use that particular word. So a particular me word may have different meanings depending on different ideas that it evoke for different persons or for different ages. A word which has a certain meaning for a child, it may be different in the mind of an adult or in the mind of an aged person. So it of course depends upon ages, circumstances and of course the uh, situation in which we use it. So there are a variety of methods through which words change their meaning and in this video, I am only going to discuss about the 10 most important uh, process or methods through which words changes their meanings. So before proceeding to the video, if you are new to my channel, do hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. So as you can see in the screen, there are, these are the 10 different methods that I am going to discuss today. They are generalization, specialization, polarization or coloring, loss of distinctive coloring, metaphorical application, euphemism, prudery, reversal of meaning, then proper names become ordinary, then extension or transference. So these are the 10 methods I am going to discuss now. So the first method through which words change their meaning is generalization. It is a process in which at one time a word which had a specialized or a restricted meaning in course of time have a wider significance or application. As for example, the word box. It was originally the name of a tree, but as it was rare and expensive, that is the wood of that tree was very rare and expensive, it then began to be used as small caskets to store jewelry, which in turn came to be known as box. So firstly, it was the name of a tree and as the tree, uh, wood of the tree was very expensive, so it was made into a box for storing jewelry and then it came to be known as the box and it in this way uh, we get its present day meaning. Then the word journey. The root meaning of this word is a day's walk or ride. Only one day's walk or ride. But for a long period this word has lost its restricted meaning of a one of one day and as we now speak of it it means a journey can be of several weeks as well. Then we have the word tragedy. Earlier the term is used to, used to denote a dramatic sense, but now it has come to mean any occurrence in our life which we felt it to be of a great calamity that, we, that has happened in our life. So tragedy, we often speak that yes, great tragedy has occurred in her life or in someone's life. So it, it has its dramatic meaning, but it is not in a restricted sense now. It has become a wide, it has been applied in a wider significance. Now we come to specialization, a process in which a word having a general or wider significance becomes specialized in due course of time. This method is completely opposite to the one that I have just discussed previously. So examples of this method is the word stuff. So Chaucer, Geoffrey Chaucer, he used the term to mean 
the same as the German word starben meaning to die. But today it is used to mean hunger. We often speak of starve, that is starvation, in relation to hunger. It is also used in some places to mean to perish from cold, but generally it is used to mean hunger. Then there is the word deer. Originally it meant a wild animal, that is any wild animal, but now it refers to one particular species of animal. Then the word toy. Earlier it used to mean anything related to triviality or bubble, that is of a very lesser significance or a lesser stature. But now it is used as a child's plaything, that is toy. Don't talk. The next method is polarization or coloring. This is a process in which a word acquires a definite coloring or emotional significance for which there can be no real justification. Examples include gothic. Earlier it was used in a derogatory sense, uh, making it synonymous with uncouth, barbarous, etc. But now it is used as a style related to architecture. Uh, in novels, we have in some of the novels we have gothic architectures, or it can also mean something related to the past. Uh, in one of the most famous novel, Udering Heights, you can find got uh, passages related to Gothic architecture. Then we have the word propaganda. It was first used to designate a committee of the Roman Catholic Church appointed for the purpose of organizing and directing mission work. That means it is related completely to church work. But now it is used as a word meaning a distortion from the truth or to mislead the public to a certain end. We often speak of propagandist politics or we often speak of a politician having uh, great propaganda in his election campaigns. We often speak of these things in this context. Then we have the word anarchist. Actually, an anarchist is a person earlier that is who stands for a form of government directly opposite of totalitarianism that means a government uh, in, in, uh, in which the people or the uh, general public has their say in everything. But now it has come to signify a person who advocates terrorism, violence as a means to achieve political ends. So the uh, earlier meaning and today's meaning is completely different. The next process is loss of distinctive coloring. Earlier I discussed about polarization or coloring. Now this method is related to loss of distinctive coloring. It usually happens in case of words with a religious or political significance and especially with those words which belong to minorities or unpopular views that means they are not famous. Examples policy politics. These terms are suggestive of dishonesty and trickery to Shakespeare and his general public or his generation. But now it is used in a very respectable sense as well because uh, we often speak of politics in every field of our life and there is also certain policies that are made by the government that is used in a very respectable sense. Yes, the government has made certain and certain policies. So it is not used in a derogatory meaning now. Then the word brief. So in the 17th century, it was used as a word akin to boastful. Akin means uh, related to or similar to boastful. But now it has become synonymous with courageous. That means the word has lost its coloring. That is its emotional significance that it has earlier. So this is the method known as the loss of distinctive coloring. The next process is metaphorical application. Now we are all aware of the meaning of the word metaphor and this particular process it involves two classes of words. The first class includes words where the literal sense is still preserved along with the metaphorical sense and the second class in includes words in which the metaphorical sense gains precedence over the literal sense. Examples include the word said. The original meaning of the word set was full, which by Elizabethan times had come to mean sober or serious. Then through metaphorical application, it started denoting 
full of thought or seriousness and by extension of metaphor only it has now started denoting full of sorrow. So a complete change in meaning has taken place here. Then the word chest. Earlier it was used as a figurative application of the normal box but today as we all know it is its usual association is with the part of human anatomy or human body. So earlier it was just a box but today it is part of human body. So this is the method of metaphorical application. The next method is euphemism. It is the description given to that figure of speech by which one seeks to hide the real nature of something unpleasant by giving it a less offensive name. So most words related to these groups are associated with that illness or disease. So examples of this particular process include passing and disease which has both become synonyms for death. We often speak of a person passing or of a person who is diseased and these are terms we often use in relation to death or illness. So this is the method of euphemism. So the next process is prudery. It is similar to euphemism only a slight difference is there a process in which a number of euphemistic expressions are traceable to a false sense of delicacy or refinement rather than a genuine desire to avoid giving pain or embarrassment. Remember one thing euphemism uh, uses the word in a certain meaning or in a certain sense in order to avoid giving pain or embarrassment to the person hearing that word. But prudery is complete uh, is different here because prudery uses the word or the person uses that word in order to show a sense of delicacy or refinement and not to avoid giving pain or embarrassment. That means the person uses it word uses this word because he wants to uh, use that word in a certain way of refinement or in order to achieve a higher stature. So examples of this method include we are we use paying guest for border, then financier for money lender, sanitary engineers for plumbers. So if we speak uh, that yes he is a border in my home or he is a border in my place. It sounds a little bit down to earth and all that. So we often use the word paying guest nowadays and it has become a part of our vocabulary as well. So this is the method of prudery. Next up we have reversal of meaning. Um, this I don't think I have to explain it to you what is meant by reversal of meaning. Let's move on to the examples. So examples include grocer. Earlier the term grocer it meant only a wholesaler but today it refers almost exclusively to a retail trader. So a complete change in meaning has taken place. Then the word restive. The word restive uh, actually when we see the word for the first time it uh, seems like yes it uh, meaning its meaning will be that to be in rest or to be still. But in reality it means impatient or fretful. So there is a complete change in meaning through which the word means something else and we when we see it for the first time we think of it as something else. So this is the uh, process of reversal of meaning. The next process is interesting because it is the process in which uh, proper nouns that is proper names become ordinary a process in which words gain their meaning from proper names of people interesting because examples let me explain it to you the word dance we use it in our uh, everyday conversation now or not in everyday conversation but in relation to literature so it is derived from the name of the philosopher dance whose opponents uh, he, they used to represent him as dry as dust theorist or philosopher who is devoid of any true scholarship it is their thinking so it did not mean blockhead now it is mean, meant as blockhead as it does today but it actually meant at that point of time as a pretender of learning so in this way um, this is a term that is dance is a term taken from a person's name actual name 
then we have the word at last the meaning is taken from the figure of at last bearing the world on his shoulders that is the figure of at last bearing the world on his shoulders and now we use the term at last to mean a collection of maps or a book or a collection of the world maps or any map collection so in this way uh, proper names become ordinary is another process of change in meaning the last method of what a uh, change in meaning of words is extension or transference this process is a combination of both the process that of generalization and specialization but it differs from both examples include wire that is the term wire it is originally a metallic filament but as telegrams are also sent by means of wires so we can use it as my friend tells us he will send us a wire so it originally actually is nowadays also it is used wire as a metallic filament but we also use the term wire to denote sending telegrams uh, he will send me a wire after two days or something like that so when we speak of this sentence my friend tells us he will send us a wire we will not think of it as sending us a metallic filament but sending us telegram then the next up, uh, word is brand etymologically connected to the word burn meaning a burning piece of wood taken from fire to mark wine casks to indicate the quality of liquor we all know that earlier liquor used to be stored in uh, cask wooden cask that is and so to mark the wine uh, cask it is used and which came to be known as the brand that is that marking on the wine cask it came to be known as brand indicating the mark of the liquid liquor and thus it came to signify quality and now we use it in our everyday conversation as branded clothes branded uh, materials and all that so in this way the word changed its meaning from the word barn or a burning piece of wood to quality so in this way uh, the extension or transference helps in changing a uh, meaning of a word from one meaning to another in different contexts in different ages and in different situations so these are the 10 different ways in which words change their meanings and change of meaning is one of the most important topics when you study the development of english language because development of any language depends upon many factors and another factor is word formation or the growth of vocabulary in any in uh, english language especially so for that i have made a separate video uh, the link will be in the i button you can click on the link and you can watch that video also in order to see how the vocabulary developed in english language uh, there also i have discussed 10 different methods of growth in vocabulary or word formation techniques so that's all for today and if you like this video and if this video has been of any help to you do subscribe to my channel uh, i will be making videos related to the development of english language and so if you want to know more about english language and its development do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon thank you